the task of selecting new security doors and partitions that are suitable for use in high-risk areas of the workplace carries a lot of responsibility. There is a bewildering range of international standards and certifications that exist to help you accurately compare the claims of different manufacturers. And this video has been created to explain the basics of the key European certifications you are likely to encounter. When it comes to high-risk areas, you need to know that security doors and partitions could potentially achieve certification in four separate areas of resistance. For manual attack resistance, we have two main standards. It's important to understand that the EN 1627 standard gives a resistance class grading for the door as a whole unit, whereas the EN 356 only gives you information about the glazing on its own. To be certified in this first standard, the whole door is subject to a series of tests, some of which involve attacking the most vulnerable part of the door with a particular group of handheld tools for a defined time. So, for example, a door set that has a certification of up to RC4 would have succeeded in resisting an attack by a selection of tools up to the fourth category. The attack time on the tested product would have lasted up to 10 minutes, and after a total test time of 30 minutes, it would have been agreed that any openings made in the door were still too small for someone to pass through. Glazing is certified separately according to its resistance to both drop tests and a more challenging axe test. So for example, if a glazing unit is certified as P4A, it means it has remained intact after a 4.1 kg steel ball has been dropped three times onto a triangle from a height of 9 meters. However, a P8B certification is achieved if a glazing unit can withstand over 70 blows from an axe. Remember, this only applies to the glazing and doesn't give any guarantees about any other parts of the door. Again, when it comes to ballistics resistance, it's vital that you are aware of another dual set of standards, the EN 1522 for the whole door set and the EN 1063 for the glazing. Doors can be certified for a range of guns, and for each test, three identical bullets are fired at the same small area, just 120 millimeters apart. It can only be certified if all three bullets fail to pass through. We've noted that there is an increasing concern about Kalashnikov attack, and whilst no European standards currently apply to these weapons, it's good to know that here at Gunnebo, we have conducted our own rigorous tests in an independent and accredited laboratory, and can provide information to customers on request. When it comes to selecting doors and partitions that need to withstand explosions, you need to appreciate that there are two types of explosions that doors can be certified for. If you are concerned about vulnerability to open-air explosions, like bomb attack, then you need to focus on this standard. But if your concern is for the possibility of industrial explosion, then you need to give greater consideration to this standard. Open-air explosions tend to exert higher pressures over a shorter period of time, and so the testing processes for each standard needs to be designed differently. To achieve a certification of EXR2, a door will have had to have resisted an open-air test explosion of 3 kilograms of TNT, detonated only 3 meters away. In industrial settings, it is more important to look at the results of specially controlled shock tube tests, as these more accurately mimic the key characteristics of many industrial explosions. For example, to achieve a certification of EPR3, a door will have to resist a shock tube test generating a pressure of 15 tons per square meter with a minimum duration of 20 milliseconds. These EPR tests are certainly more challenging for the door set than the EXR ones. You may notice that some blast or ballistic resistance certifications are followed by the letters NS or S. It is important to realize that the S stands for SPALL and indicates that whilst the door remained intact after a test, there was some evidence of flying splintered fragments on the far side of the door. With an NS, you can be assured that no splintering was observed. And lastly, we need to consider the hugely important question of resistance to fire. The certification codes tend to look quite complex. This E-level rates a product's integrity by testing its control of spontaneous flaming on the unexposed side. This involves observing a cotton ball that's in contact with the protected side of the door and showing that it will not generate a flame in a given time. 
The EI level gives you further information about insulation by monitoring temperature increases at various points on the unexposed side. To be classified, no individual measurement should exceed 180 degrees Celsius, and the average reading across the leaf should remain below 140 degrees Celsius. It is also important to remember that if you are looking for non-standard sized doors, you will need to check carefully if these test certifications still apply. Security risks are ever-evolving, and so is the need for high-risk sites to assess security doors and partitions across two or more of these resistance classifications. You will now have a head start in interpreting them. For more information, please get in touch with us.